Securing access into IoT and OT systems has always been a challenge in the IT space. Contractors need access and either VPNs or VDI solutions are typically used to provide this capability. There's also an operational wrapper that needs to be considered to ensure that the OT systems SLAs are met. I'm Sebastian, and I'm gonna be walking through today how the Zero Trust Exchange delivers private privilege remote access. Firstly, I have pre-drawn various elements on this lightboard. You can see the employee down here, the Zero Trust Exchange over here, the third party over here, and what is a solar farm. Now, the Zero Trust Exchange is where all of that policy is evaluated. So taking into consideration Zero Trust fundamentals, we need to know who that user is, what permissions are associated with that user, the device posture, and also where they're trying to go. In this case here, we have this wind farm, we have a Zscaler app connector that has access to these individual elements within this specific location. So here we've got wind, for, wind turbine A, wind turbine B, and what happens is the Zscaler app connector makes an outbound request to the Zero Trust Exchange. This is essentially the control mechanism and the signaling mechanism. So you don't require any inbound connectivity from a firewall perspective. Everything is outbound from the connector to the Zero Trust Exchange. So if we take a conventional scenario with Zscaler Private Access, we have our employee at the bottom left corner here. We're going to connect this user up to the Zero Trust Exchange. It will evaluate policy to see if they are able to access that resource, and then it will then establish that connection. Now this employee is able to connect to this resource using port 22, also known as SSH. In order to connect to this application, they're going to know the credentials. So is it a root login? Is there a special user account which is attributed to this? Now what we can do here is actually use credential storage within the Zero Trust Exchange and actually inject that with private privilege remote access. So what we're now doing is removing this line from this employee directly into the Zero Trust Exchange and instead exposing this user to what is a portal. Now this portal is accessed via a web browser. So this employee no longer needs any agents on their endpoint. Likewise, this third party is also able to access this same portal, but based upon who they are and what they're trying to access, they will have different types of applications available to them. So if we take the scenario of OT systems, um, there's a recent report between the years of 2023 and 2024, 50% um, of OT systems were leveraging an out-of-date operating system. So why would you trust your third parties as much as you trust your employees? This employee now will access everything via a portal. Whether that's an SSH application, whether that's an RDP application, or whether it's something which is supporting VNC. So what happens now is this user comes along, they access it via a web portal. We do credential injection at this point so they never need to share the password with any of their counterparts and they've got secure connectivity to the application that they're trying to access. If we now look at what this looks like for a third party, again, a portal, whether that's the same portal or a different portal, they connect in, they select the application that they want this is securely delivered like so because they have the required access permissions. So what do we do for third parties at this point? Well, this third party is able to access those applications which are defined within the Zero Trust Exchange because we know who that user is and what they're trying to access. They're given access controls. They are then able to connect to this application. Now, what do we do from an auditability point of view? Well, what we can do is actually start recording these sessions within the cloud. The reason why, again, this is important is now you're recording this, you're storing this within the Zero Trust Exchange, you can see exactly what happens when that third party logged onto that piece of critical infrastructure. Likewise, if we really wanted to, we can actually enable something called session proctoring or session viewing 
so that that employee can see exactly what was happening on that third party session at the same time in real time. And if required, it might even be that the third party delivers access to that employee. So that employee now has access over the console, which is being accessed. In order to actually make this sustainable as well, based upon the thousands of OT devices which typically reside across your infrastructure, this is where the likes of IT service management tools come into play. We can use ITSM as a way to approve access to specific segments, like so, through the use of authorization. So a user can come along here, which is a third party. They put in a request to the IT service management tool. We then expose an application to them based upon approvals for a certain amount of time, and then they're then able to access this within the portal. The same thing can be said as well for what we call micro tenancies. So if you have a team that like to specialize in specific areas of your infrastructure, you're able to actually split this portal up into multiple sections and have multiple teams managing your infrastructure within the Zero Trust Exchange. Overall, we have our employees, which no longer need to know the credentials of the resources they're accessing. Likewise, we have the third parties here accessing resources they're only entitled to access. Have that session ushering, session viewing, session control, full recording for that auditability point of view. And the last additional element here is actually connecting that user securely and ensuring that malware protections are in place. We can do this through sandboxing. So any download which is conducted from that end application through to this third party is going to be scanned for malware. Of course, that means that your applications remain secure and your employees and your third parties accessing their resources are also secure as well. So with that said, if you wish to learn more about Privilege Remote Access, visit our website, www.zscaler.com and book yourself in for a demo.